I'm Bob Duhamel, and today I'm going to answer a couple of questions from a couple of my videos. They're different questions from different videos, but they both show a fundamental misunderstanding of the nature of zero volts. So let's begin by taking an imaginary trip to Death Valley. Now at the bottom of Death Valley is Badwater Basin. It's the lowest place in the northern half of the, weather, of the Western Hemisphere at 282 feet below sea level. Next to Badwater Basin is a small mountain and on that mountain is a sign that says sea level. So I'm going to take an imaginary GPS receiver and I'm going to climb up to that sign and I'm going to stand next to it and look at my GPS receiver and it's going to tell me that I am at an altitude of zero feet. I have no altitude. So if I jump off this mountain, I should just float away. Well, my buddy down here in Badwater Basin is going to look at me and say, hey dude, your GPS receiver may say you have no altitude, but to me it looks like you're 282 feet high. Maybe you better come off that mountain before you hurt yourself. So anyway, I climb off the mountain and get down to the bottom, and now my GPS receiver shows me that I'm at minus 282 feet, or 282 feet below sea level, or 282 feet below zero. So zero was not an absence of altitude, it's just an altitude that we have decided to call zero. We've chosen sea level as a zero reference point. So if you're at sea level, you have zero altitude. If you go above it, you have a positive altitude, or if you go down to Badwater Basin, below sea level, you have a negative altitude. In this case, minus 282 feet. And altitude, like electricity or like voltage, is a type of potential energy. So there's a similarity between measuring altitude and measuring voltage. So, for example, if I go to a negative voltage, negative voltage is not the opposite of positive voltage. It's just a voltage that's lower than another voltage that we call zero. So now we decide to leave, go to the car, and we find that I have a flat tire. So here's the tire. Here's the valve stem. And I put my tire pressure gauge on it. And the little stick does not come out. It says I have zero pounds per square inch. Zero PSI of pressure. So I have no air pressure. But my buddy, who does these sort of things, comes along with a barometer, and he says, hmm, this barometer measures absolute pressure. Let's put it on your tire and see what it sees. Rather interesting, bar bar interesting barometer if you can put it on a tire. So he puts it on there, and he says, no, no, no. My barometer says that you have about 15 PSI in the tire. And it also says that there's about 15 PSI outside the tire. So the pressure inside the tire and the pressure outside the tire is the same. There's not a lack of pressure. They're just the same. And a tire pressure gauge tells me the difference between the pressure inside the tire and the pressure outside. So it measures the inside here and the outside somewhere in there. And the pressure makes this little stick comes out, come out and it tells me the difference. So let's patch the tire and pump it up until this reads 30 PSI. And my friend comes with his barometer and says, okay, outside we still have 15 PSI, but inside we now have 45 PSI. And the tire pressure gauge tells me the difference, which is 30 PSI. And again, this is an analog to voltage because this is air pressure, voltage is electrical pressure. And both types of pressure, or any kind of pressure, when you measure it, you're always comparing one pressure to another. So a tire pressure gauge compares the inside pressure to the outside pressure and tells you the difference. A voltmeter, let me get these out of my face here, uh, a voltmeter has two leads, a red lead and a black lead, and the meter tells you the voltage difference, the difference in the voltage between the two leads. So you put the black lead at one voltage and the red lead at another voltage and the voltmeter tells you the difference. If the red lead is at a higher voltage 
and the black lead is at a lower voltage, it gives you a positive reading. If the red lead is at a lower voltage and the black lead is at a higher voltage, it gives you a negative reading. So by design, the voltmeter tells you the difference in voltage between the two leads. That's why you have two leads. So let's take another look, this time using some batteries, and see what things do if we actually have voltage to work with. So let's uh, take a couple of batteries. And make this 10 volts, make them both 10 volt batteries. And let's make a circuit with them. Go through a couple of resistors. And for convenience, let's make them 10 ohm resistors. Now let's start measuring some voltage. Let's put the black lead here and start measuring voltages from that point. So I have anchored my black lead at the negative side of this lower battery. And when I say I have a 10 volt battery, it's telling me that I have two terminals, a positive terminal and a negative terminal. The positive is the higher voltage, the negative is the lower voltage, and the 10 volts is the difference between those two voltages. So I have a difference in voltage between here and here of 10 volts. When I draw a voltage with just between two lines with no polarity, I'm telling you what the difference in voltage is. So there's a difference of 10 volts there and another 10 volts here. So what am I going to see when I take my red lead and start looking at these voltages? So I have 10 volt difference, higher voltage, lower voltage. If I put my red lead here, my red lead is at the higher voltage, my black lead is at the lower voltage. The difference is 10 volts, so it reads positive 10 volts. Now if I move my lead up to here, well I've gone up 10 volts, I go up another 10 volts. Voltage is like altitude, it's like maybe stacking a couple of barrels on top of each other. I have two three foot barrels, put one on top of the other, I have six feet of barrels. Same thing happens with batteries. So if I have 10 volts, I go another 10 volts, up here I have positive 20 volts. So red lead at the higher voltage, black lead at the lower voltage, the difference is 10 volts plus 10 volts, 20 volts, gives me positive 20 volts. Now let's see how much uh, current we have going in here. I have a total of 20 ohms when you have resistors in series, you just add them up just like you add up the batteries. So I have a total of 20 ohms, total of 10, 20 volts. If you don't know your, if you know your voltage, you divide into it. So 20 ohms into 20 volts gives me one amp of current. So now, let's see what happens as I go around this circuit. If I put my red lead here, I see positive 20 volts because this is the same place as that. They're connected with a wire, no resistance in between. If there's no resistance, there can be no difference in voltage. So 20 volts here, 20 volts there, same voltage. Now as I go through, I have two 10 ohm resistors in series. If I have equal resistance, I must have equal voltage. So whenever you have current go through a resistance, you get a voltage difference across it. And the voltage difference here will be, well, I have two resistors that are equal, a total of 20 volts, so I must have equal voltage across each resistor, so I must have 10 volts here and 10 volts there. So let's draw that in here again. 10 volts, 10 volts. And we have conventional entering this end of the resistor, so our voltage is always higher where conventional go conventional voltage goes in and lower where it comes out. So higher voltage here, lower voltage there, difference is 10 volts. So I start with 20 volts, I lose 10 volts. So what do I have here? Plus 10 volts. So those are the same voltage. And if I come down here, I have 10 volts, I lose 10 volts. I have to have the higher voltage here, lower voltage there, difference is 10 volts. 10 minus 10 is zero volts. Have I run out of voltage? No, let's take a look at that. Now, let's move the red lead over here where the black lead is because, of course, here I'm also going to read zero volts. Why? Because the voltmeter, like the pressure gauge, tells me the difference between two voltages. I have the red lead and the black lead at the same voltage, so what's it going to read? It tells me the difference, which is nothing, zero volts. 
So this is zero volts because the black lead and the red lead are at the same place. Now here is a bit of a point of confusion as this is starting to answer the question. Once in a while I find someone who gets a little confused about what's going on in this area here. Sometimes people that have a little experience in electronics don't quite get what's going on here because we have 20 volts pushing current this way, we still have 10 volts pushing current, and now we've run out of voltage. What's happening to the current? There's no more voltage to push it anywhere. Does it just pile up down here? Well, no, because a battery acts like a pump. Think of it like a vacuum cleaner. A vacuum cleaner has a hose, it sucks air in through the hose, runs it through a filter, and then a pump pushes it back out, out the other end. In fact, if I take that hose and run it from one end to the other, I'm going to get a circulation of air going through the pump and around the hose. Well, a battery does the same thing. It acts like a pump. It's sucking in electricity on this side. Remember, it's a conventional current. I know there's electrons going the opposite way, but I, as most of the electronics industry, pretend that the electricity goes the opposite direction, conventional current. So it's sucking in the current in the negative uh, terminal and blowing it out the positive terminal. So it's circulating it round and round, round and around. So I don't have an absence of voltage here. It's just simply the lower voltage of this stack. So this is the, uh, like a vacuum cleaner has sucks on one side and blows on the other. Is this sucking electrons in here? You betcha. It's working just like a pump. So we have a lower voltage here, a higher voltage here, and it acts like a pump. It's sucked in the lower voltage and blown out the higher voltage, just like a vacuum cleaner has a lower pressure on one side and a higher pressure on the other side. It sucks air in the lower pressure and blows it out the higher pressure. Exactly the same thing. So we have not run out of voltage. We are just at a point where, well, why do we have zero? Because this black lead is at the same place as the red lead. Let's move the black lead and see what happens to the voltages. That'll help us understand what's going on here. I'm just erasing these numbers because they're going to change, but nothing else will. Except I broke the circuit here. Let's fix that. Now I'm going to put the black lead right here. And let's start measuring voltages. So if I put my red lead here now, what do we have? Well, my black lead is here and my red lead is here. The difference is 10 volts. Now my red lead is at the lower voltage. My black lead is at the higher voltage. So by design, my meter is going to give me a negative reading. The difference is 10 volts. So I see minus 10 volts. What's going to happen if I move my red lead up here? Well, I go up 10 volts, another 10 volts. So I go up a total of 20 volts. So I go minus 10, and that means I have positive 10 volts here. So what happens if I put the meter right here, I put the red lead right here? Well, now I have the red lead at the same place as the black leads. So the red lead and the black lead are at the same voltage. What's the meter going to tell me? Zero volts. So once again, this is 10 volts lower than zero, so I get minus 10. This is 10 volts higher than zero, so it's plus 10. Why is this zero? Simply because that's where the black lead is, and I put the red lead there, I read zero. Sort of like what we had in Death Valley. Turns out that zero voltage is not an absence of voltage, it's not even my lowest voltage. It's just the place where the black lead is. So now we see, oh, yeah, I'm not out of voltage here, I have negative 10 volts, it's like a suction. Sucking those electrons, or sucking the electricity right back into the battery to be circulated. And let's go around here again. If I go here, I have positive 10 volts because they'll be the same voltage since there's no resistance between them. I start at positive 10, I lose 10 volts. So what do I have here? Zero volts. So remember before they were both 10 volts. They were the same voltage. They're still the same voltage. So what happens if I put my black lead here and my red lead here, which is exactly what I'm doing. The black lead is at zero volts or the black lead is at this voltage. The red lead is at this voltage. They're the same voltage. So I see zero volts. They were 10 volts. Why were they 10 volts before? Only because I had the black lead down here and that was 10 volts higher. So with the black lead here, let's use imaginary leads here. With the black lead here, this is 10 volts higher. So I see plus 10, plus 10, same voltage. But I put them at the same place, plus 10, plus 10, same voltage. So the meter sees no difference and tells me there's 
zero volts. So those are the same voltage. So that's the nature of uh, measuring voltage here. So let's go ahead and finally answer the question because he was talking about alternating current. So with alternating current, we have a couple of wires. One is called the hot and one is called the neutral. And the neutral has no voltage on it. Does it have no voltage? Well, it has zero volts. Why? That's because we're, that's where we put the black lead when we measure voltage. And the neutral wire is also somewhere in the system connected to ground. So it has the same voltage as ground. So ground is here somewhere. Somewhere it's connected. If I put my red lead here, it's the same voltage as the neutral. So if the black lead is at the same voltage as the red lead, what do I read? Zero volts. So if I put my black lead at the ground and put my red lead at the neutral, what do I read? Zero volts. Okay. If I put my red lead up here, well, I read whatever voltage I have there. Let's take a look at that in a moment. Let's get this out of the way, get rid of the clutter. So we usually think of alternating current as where we have a voltage that's changing. We have positive to negative. And then a 50th or a 60th of a second later, it goes negative to positive. And it keeps flipping that way. Positive to negative, negative to positive. Positive to negative, negative to positive. Flip, flop, flip, flop. That's what we usually think of. But now I have my black lead here. So what's the voltage here? If I put my red lead here, it's at the same wire as my black lead positive or my red lead and my black lead are at the same voltage so my meter is going to tell me zero so that becomes zero volts how do we make sense out of that well let's look at it this way let's imagine that you have a couple of elevators try to get these not in front of my face here we have a red elevator and a black elevator and we're watching those elevators they're hooked up together so that when one goes up the other goes down so they're going up and down and up and down positive to negative positive to negative just like the alternating current so remember voltages like potential energy and go higher and higher is more potential energy so like higher voltage like lower voltage so they're going opposite directions positive to negative back and forth back and forth but let's step aboard the black elevator now, even though the elevator is going up and down, we're sitting in the black elevator, so to us, it seems to be stationary. So we see the red elevator going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. So instead of seeing them go opposite, we see the red go to a higher position and then to a lower position, higher and lower and higher and lower. So this is zero, not because it's not moving, but that's because that's our frame of reference. That's where we're looking from. We're looking from the black elevator and we see the red elevator go up and down. We're looking at the neutral wire. So what we see up here, let's put a battery here to help make some sense out of that. So here we are with a battery. Now we're going to simulate some alternating current by having a battery that flips up and flips over and over. Let's make that a 100 volt battery. So right now we have positive to negative. So what I see is a difference of black lead here, red lead here. Red leads at the higher voltage, black leads at the lower voltage. So the meter is going to give me a positive reading. The difference is 100 volts. So I see 100 volts positive. Now the 50th or a 60th of a second later, depending on where you are, the battery is going to flip. So now it's positive to negative. Now my black lead is here, still the same place. My red lead is here. Now my red lead is at a lower voltage and a difference of 100 volts. So black lead at the higher voltage, red lead at the lower voltage. Now my meter reads a negative voltage. So it reads minus 100 volts. So it's 100 volts minus 100 volts. 100 volts minus 100 volts. Doing a little square wave here, of course, and out of the wall we get a sine wave, but because we have a flipping battery, we're getting a square wave because it's just flipping, 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 flipping. So if we look from the vantage point of the neutral wire, we see the hot wire go positive to negative, positive to negative. And so once again, it's like being in the elevator where we have the black elevator and red elevator. We are sitting in the black elevator and we see the red elevator going higher, positive, lower, negative, positive, negative. What would happen if we 
put the black lead up here. Well, that would be like getting out of the black elevator and stepping aboard the red elevator. Now, it seems like the red elevator doesn't move and it's the black one going up and down and up and down. So if we put our black lead here, it looks like the voltage is going up and down here. But we put the black lead here and therefore it looks like the voltage is going up and down on this one. It's just like which elevator you're in, this one's which wire we're in. And that was another part of the question, uh, why do you only have voltage on one wire? Well, we have voltage on both wires. but you're at the vantage point of one, so you only see the voltage move on the other. So that's what's going on here. So the final question was, let's make a complete circuit here. And here comes the question. If I put my voltmeter here, I have zero volts. Or especially if I ground my meter. Okay. Let's put our black lead at ground just to because that might be what we do. And so I put my red lead here. Well, remember the neutral wire is somewhere connected to ground, so they have the same voltage. So if I put my red lead here, I see how many volts? They're the same voltage. Meter tells me the difference. I see zero volts. Okay, so how can there be any current in the neutral wire if there's no voltage on it? Well, we answered that question already. We have a complete circuit here. We have a 100 volt battery and it's circulating the current this way and then that way and then this way and that way. And my zero voltage is not the absence of voltage. It's simply telling me that my red lead and my black lead are at the same voltage. So sometimes this is positive, pushing the current this way. And sometimes the battery flips, pushing the current the opposite direction. But we don't have an absence of voltage on the neutral wire. It's just the same volt, it's just that we have our black lead there, and so when we measure the voltage, we see zero because the meter tells us the difference. And when we have both leads here, or if we put the black lead here because the voltages are the same, we see zero volts. So can, be gro can ground be something other than zero volts? Oh yeah. As a matter of fact, you go and drive a stake over here to establish a true earth ground, and you go 100 yards away and do it again, put a voltmeter between them, you're very likely to get different voltages because of the nature of currents going through the ground and such. And uh, so that's why when you ground a building, you have to ground it at one point. You can't put grounding stakes at two different parts of a large building because they're actually grounded at different points and you'll get some currents going between them. So it's only zero volts because that's where the black lead is. Okay, the other question had to do with my series on linear power supplies. And I'll draw my power supply as an equivalent circuit. So there's a lot of circuitry there, but I don't want to get into the complication of it because we're just talking about what's going on on the output. So I'm going to make a Thevenin equivalent circuit here. Be sure to read about Thevenin's theorem at RSD Academy. So we have a black box that, oh, if I go close to the design we're working on, we'll say this is a 16 volt battery and this is going to be a um, 160 ohm resistor. Actually, it's going to be a variable resistor because that's the way a power supply works. So any circuit can be broken down to an equivalent circuit that appears to be, if it's a DC circuit, a single battery and a single resistor in series. In the case of a power supply, we have a special case because it's intelligent and it monitors the voltage here. And in this case, uh, the voltage monitor, I'll draw it like that, is looking at that voltage and it will change the resistance to whatever it takes to keep this at positive 12 volts. So that's the nature of a power supply. If this impedance changes, causing us to have more current, well, the voltage here is going to drop because that's what happens. We get more current through this resistor. We're going to get more voltage drop. This voltage gets lower but the intelligence of the circuit, all the op amps and Zener diodes and everything work to change this impedance so that it lowers to bring that voltage back up. So that's the equivalent circuit of the uh, linear power supply. So anyway, so this is 12 volts pretty much no matter what we do with the load. So the load's variable. If the load uh, resistance goes down and causes more current, it's going to cause a voltage drop. 
the intelligence here will lower this voltage or lower this resistance to bring that voltage back up. Just a little feedback loop in there. But what happens if we short this out? Now what happens to this voltage? Let's put this in red just because we've been doing that. Okay, now we've shorted this out. Now where do we put our black lead? We always put our black lead at the negative side of the load. So there's our black lead. Is it the lowest voltage in the circuit? Well, if we look at the real circuit, it's not the lowest voltage, but that's where we're going to put the black lead, the negative side of the load. So now, with a short circuit here, there's no resistance in between. If there's no resistance between, there can't be a difference in voltage. So that means that the voltage here is the same as the voltage there. And what's the meter going to tell us? If the voltages are the same, it's got to be zero volts because the red lead and the black lead are at the same voltage, so the meter tells us zero volts. And the design of this particular uh, power supply was such that under this condition, this would uh, settle down at a point where I'd have um, 100 milliamps. I don't know if you can read that or not, but anyway, 100 milliamps of current going through it. So I stated, okay, the short circuit, I have zero volts and 100 milliamps of current. And that makes no sense, does it? How can I have current of 100 milliamps? How can I have any current flowing if I don't have any voltage? I need voltage to push current. Yeah, that's kind of a legitimate question there, but if we look at the whole circuit, we see what's really going on here. We have a 16 volt battery. A, at this point, this is going to be 160 ohm resistor. So that's our circuit. 16 volt battery, 160 ohm resistor, and it pushes 100 milliamps around the circuit. So why do we have zero volts? Because we have zero resistance. To have any voltage, we must have two things, current plus resistance. Let me pull out my little soda straw to remind us here. Remember that if I have no resistance in the straw and I blow through it, essentially the pressure is the same everywhere. If I pinch it down, giving resistance, but I don't blow through it, I still have the same pressure everywhere. But now that I have resistance and blow through it, I get a backup of pressure behind the resistance. So I get a higher pressure here and a lower pressure there. Well, that only works if you have both resistance and current. I have current, but no resistance. So I cannot have any voltage difference between these two points. So it's not voltage pushing the current from here to here. That's just a short wire, which means I'm going to have the same voltage anywhere along there. So I have the 100 milliamps cir circulating through the circuit and pushed by 16 volts. I'm going to redraw this because I feel it might not be making 100% sense there. But I think if I redraw it slightly, it will. Here's the battery. 16 volts. Here's the 160 ohm resistor. So there's our simple circuit. And... There's our current. So that's what we have. The load was here. So I had a load and it balanced out so that I always had 12 volts here. But now the load is gone. So this is all I have. It's just a simple circuit. 16 volts, 160 ohms gives me 100 milliamps. And there's the circuit. Now. Should we be surprised that if I put my black lead here and then measure here with my red lead, am I surprised to find zero volts there? No, because I have 16 volts, 160 ohms. I consume all of my voltage going through the one resistor, and I have zero volts left over. So I have my red lead at the same point as my black lead on the negative side of my battery. So Red lead, same place as the black lead, I read zero volts. So if we just kind of redraw the circuit that way, maybe it makes a little more sense. I shouldn't expect to have any difference in voltage between these two points because there's no resistor there. Now, as soon as I put some resistance there, now I have current plus resistance, and I expect this voltage to be something higher, something greater than zero. I did that in blue. I wanted to do it in red. 
I expect this voltage to be something greater than zero. And once again, in the case of the power supply, it has intelligence and this resistor is variable so that it always changes this resistance to whatever it takes to keep that at 12 volts. So anyway, once again, short that out. Now looking at that simple circuit and seeing, ah, that's what we're doing here. We expect this to be zero volts because it's the same place as the bottom there. So that answers the question on the power supply. So in both cases, you see what the question was, how can I have current if I have no voltage? Well, in this case, well, we expect the current to be going through this wire. We, this voltage is not pushing the current. It's just this voltage is the same as that voltage. So the meter reads zero. So I hope that answered the questions. And if it didn't, or if you have other questions, be sure to ask them in the comments. I answer as many questions as I have time for, and sometimes other people step in and answer the questions, which I strongly encourage. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.